Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 74 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm just, uh, you know, here taking a look at some of the things going on, getting ready to tidy up the room a little bit, and uh, I wanted to start working on my automated Essentia system. Uh, last episode, we wrapped up saying that basically we'd start working on a system to automatically fill up all these Essentia jars whenever we want or need to. Uh, we'll be able to keep track of everything that's in them and do all kinds of stuff. It's going to be similar, but again, uh, as different as possible from the Forgecraft 2 way of doing it, but to be honest, there's really only like one way of doing this, right? So. There's going to be some similarities to the build that I did uh, on Forgecraft, but uh, luckily, because we've got logistics pipes, we can do things a lot more uh, compact and a lot easier. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a couple of the things that we're going to need, and I'm going to show you guys how you can use computer craft, networking cables. I'm going to keep the programming light, as I usually like to do, uh, but I'm going to pretty much uh, you know, stick to uh, similar methods that I used on the Forgecraft series, so I wouldn't have to write too many of the programs all over again, um, and then I'll be able to show you guys how all this stuff works. Also, I've been uh, kind of leaving my server up and running for a little bit here, so as you can see, we've got a lot of mana beans, which is really cool and helpful for us. So we've got a ton of mana beans hanging out. It's funny how, like, most mana beans seem to hover in, like, the 200 to 300 range, but then there's, like... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six that are way up in the 900 range. And take a look at that. They happen to just be um, all the base aspects. So clearly, Terra, Perdito, Ordo, Ignis, Air, and Aqua. The base aspects have a much higher chance. It looks like almost three times the chance uh, to drop from Mana Beans as any of the combined aspects, which is kind of neat to know. So just by leaving this running for a long time, we were able to kind of figure that out pretty neat. So good to know that uh, the base aspects there are a much higher chance of running. We're going to get started building some cool stuff for computer craft. Now there's a couple things we're going to need to do to get started here. Let's take a look at our Thaumonomicon and see what's up. Uh, the mod Thaumic Tinkerer adds some nifty stuff for us and we're going to want to get started playing around with it. So one of the things that are added by Thaumic Tinkerer uh, is right over here. Let's see, computer craft peripherals, aspectalizer. I'm looking for that one thing that I'm looking for and I'm not seeing it in here. Let me take a look. All right, so the first thing we want to make here is some networking cable. Now, I was thinking that there was a block that I needed to do this with, but then I remembered, no, it's not. There's a block for something else that you need to do with it. I'll show you how this works. So networking cable is very cool from computer craft. It allows you to connect two peripherals. So pretty much anything that a computer can interact with, like a monitor or a bunch of other stuff that's piled into computer craft and some of the things added by open blocks can be connected with these cables that kind of just run the networks together. Now, in order for these cables to connect to the computer or the device that it wants to connect to, we're going to need another piece of the puzzle. And that is um, right over here. We're going to need a wired modem. Okay, so this guy, and I'm going to get like a stack of them, or as much as I can for that matter. And while that's there, I'm going to go ahead and request like a bunch of stone because I'm going to need a bunch of it more than I have already. Stone, let's get like a thousand of them or something. So wired modems are going to be used here to hook these things together. So all you have to do with your wired modem is it's pretty easy. Looks like I'm right on the edge of what's considered <laughs> inside this area. All right, so to get this wired modem hooked up properly, uh, all you have to do is, I think, just pop this guy down here. Now I think I might need to craft him together. Let's see. Let's do this. I'm probably going to have to do this with a computer anyway. So, let me make sure this thing's labeled. Yeah, it is. So I can break this without fear of losing the program written on it. Now, can I combine a wired modem onto a turtle? No, I can't. All right. So we're definitely going to need a computer. We didn't really need a, a turtle anyway. I just happened to be using one, you know, just because. Uh, so let's get one of these. And we're also going to need some monitors. So while I'm at it, I'm thinking I'm going to need like five by three, five by four. I think five by four is what I'm going to need. So I'm going to get the 20 monitors here just in preparation. And I'm not 100% sure if I can activate this peripheral, but we're going to find out. So basically, in order to get this computer to talk to things, we need to have a wired modem on the side and then some networking cable coming out of it. 
Cool. Now the problem is that you can't always hook modems onto every block. Um, it can only fit onto solid blocks at the moment, which means they can't go on to request logistics pipes and they can't go onto the warded jars. So what we want to do is be able to read how much of each Essentia in each jar there is and tell the computer about it. So in order for this to work, we need to hook these guys all up. Well, don't worry, there's a block from Open Blocks that makes this doable. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see, I think it might be called a modem, but we'll find out. It is not. All right, so now we have to look in open blocks and figure out what the thing is called. Open blocks, open peripherals, that is. Uh, there we go, peripheral proxy. Cool, that doesn't look too bad. So we're going to want, like, I don't know, almost a stack of these, but I want to try and be a little conservative with it. That ought to be enough. So the peripheral proxy is basically added by open peripherals so that you can connect your networking cable to non-solid blocks. So anytime you want to connect to things that you wouldn't normally be able to connect to with computer craft, but because a mod adds it, it's going to be uh, doable. So all we have to do to get this peripheral proxy is place it down and make sure the green arrows are pointing at the block that you want to read. Cool. Um, now the other thing I want to do here is try my best to get this thing to behave the way I want it to. Let's actually run this back here. So we'll put the wired modem on there. we will put these guys here. I don't know if the wired modem, yeah it does. We do need a wired modem here. I couldn't remember if this acted like a wired modem or not. All right, so that should be that. So now we should be able to read what's in that jar. Let's find out, shall we? By the way, you wanna right click your modems here and then it'll connect them as shown. All right, I'll be back in a moment. All right, so the first thing I want to do is be able to display on a computer monitor how many of each aspect we have available to us. And I've kind of picked out a spot where I want this to work out. And we're going to display it down probably right over to here. So I'm thinking right here would be a nice place. So I've got my monitors ready to go. Now, because these monitors are full blocks, they don't need to be, or we don't really have to worry about the whole peripheral proxy thing. There we go, cool. So we just need to put the modem here, and then we need to put this here, and then right click, and that'll turn red, indicating that it's turned on. Cool. Uh, now, to get this to work, we want to grab two pieces of code off paste spin. Now, I'm probably gonna have to modify them a little bit, but I'll probably do that off camera. But I'm gonna paste spin get this, and you know what I'll do is I'll make sure to paste spin put any modifications I make so that it you know works and this is going to be my button API which is that API I've used for a few of the touchscreen things I've done in the past and then I'll also paste bin get this and I'll call that aspects cool now let's edit aspects there's a whole bunch of code in here that I need to modify just a little bit so I'll be back in a minute all right, guys, we're back. So just a real quick demonstration of how this works. Uh, there's one command once you wrap your peripheral, which uh, in this case, I'm wrapping this one here with Beastia in it, right? And why don't I go ahead and put my goggles on just so you guys can exactly see what I'm talking about. So this Beastia has uh, 19 uh, in the jar there, right? Looking good. Now, if we come over here, we can see that if we ask that uh, peripheral, which is TT aspect container one, uh, exactly which of these guys it is. Let's see, come on now we'll see that um, it's telling me that the aspects inside that jar are Beastia. And if we say, hey, get the count for Beastia, it comes back and says there's 19. So we can read using these peripherals exactly which aspect there is and how much. Uh, now there's one little problem that's gonna get fixed soon. Um, in version 21 of the Direwolf 20 mod pack, which I'm using, we have somewhat of an older version of Thaumic Tinkerer, and the warded jars can't read if there's no aspect at all. But that was fixed in a newer version of Thaumic Tinkerer, which is actually included in the Direwolf 20 pack version 22. So once we update to the new version, things will behave a little bit better. But for now, when we say, hey, what kind of um, aspect is in here, it's going to report back as um, nothing, even though it's labeled. So if you have a labeled jar and it's empty, in the newer version of the pack, it's going to work just fine. So let's uh, get out of here and uh, go back into our aspects code and just finish cleaning a few things up. So long story short, uh, what I should be able to do is run this aspects code and it should tell me on my computer how much beastie I have. Awesome. So now all I need to do is go through here and just add a bunch more stuff. So I'm basically gonna have to go through, um, break all this wall and everything. 
And I'm probably gonna have to like clean this up a little bit once I'm done. Making a bit of a mess, don't mind me. Um, but long story short, I'd like to do that. Now I'm also wondering if I could maybe, just maybe, um, get a second row of jars going on up here. Let's see, how many do I have along here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So there's sixteen there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm, okay, so let me see if I can get this to behave a little bit, and maybe what I'm trying to get is maybe so that he doesn't have to, the golem doesn't have to walk too close or over above these things that he usually gets stuck on, uh, because I do still need a golem to fill these jars, and I'd like it to be, you know, as quick a process as possible. Alright guys, I have a nifty idea for some slightly more efficient jar design here, and I'm trying to be as efficient as possible in the, th in the Thongcraft room here, so that's why I'm kind of messing around with this and seeing how good of a job I can come up with. Uh, so let's see here. If I were to put these guys like so, I think we'd be in pretty good shape in terms of efficiency, and I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. Let me finish moving all these things. I just wanted you to see what I was working on so that this could be as efficient of a room as possible. And I think I've actually... I tested this in single player and it worked really well, so we're going to find out how right I am about the efficiency of this design. Now of course I'm gonna have to rearrange a few other things but that's not a big deal. Hopefully I've got enough inventory space for all this stuff. No, of course not. Sorry, I'll go get those two jars in a moment. And actually, I don't know if you guys noticed this or not. Oh, I just killed some aspects, that's okay. Um, but I actually have two of one of the aspects. I'm wondering if you noticed which one. I have two jars here. I don't know how I managed to pull that off, but I did. All right, I should have one more jar. There we go. Because there's 51 aspects, and I've got an even number of jars. So obviously I know I have two of something. So I know which one it is. I'm wondering if you guys do. All right, guys. So I've hooked up all the peripheral proxies and the wired modems and all the cables, turned them all on. And if we go over and look at our aspect screen, we'll see that we've got pretty much everything listed. Uh, like I said, the only things not listed here would be anything that's currently empty like this uh, arbor right there. But I think most of the other ones have at least something in them, so we should be in pretty good shape here. Yeah, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, now to figure out this cabling work, I'm hoping that I can hook up this logistics pipe with the peripheral proxy. We'll see. All right, guys, so I've made a little bit of a couple tweaks to the way that this program worked that I did in Forgecraft. Now I did actually do a whole like video about how this code works so if you're really interested in it you can check that video out it's on my channel uh, just go look through my computer craft tutorials I think it's in that playlist what you can find there is exactly how this works now the only thing I changed is how it requests mana beans using logistics pipes in the past I had a bunch of turtles set up and it was a lot of effort to get mana beans out of the applied energistic system but now because of logistics pipes it's a whole heck of a lot easier all we got to do is come over here here and say, hey, I would like to have, I don't know, 10 Ordo, and hit Execute Fill Request. And what it'll do is it'll grab 10 Mana Beans with the Ordo aspect and throw them into that chest, which will eventually be the Alchemical Furnace. How cool is that? So, uh, you know, let's say, for example, I wanted Examinus, and I wanted, uh, you know, 40 of them. We could Execute Fill Request, and it'll grab 40 Examinus aspects, and there it is. Perfect. So it's working exactly the way we want it to. Now what's cool is it actually does, uh, you know, do some calculations. So for example, Corpus here, the max you can have in a jar is 64 and we've got 52. So the most we could add is 10 or 12, I mean. So if we hit plus 10, we get 10. If we hit plus 10 again, it just sticks to 12. It won't let you go any higher than 12. And of course, you also can't go any lower than zero. So the best you can do is get up to 12 and the lowest you can get down to is zero. And uh, you can hit refill jar if you want and it'll automatically calculate how many are needed to completely refill the jar based on what's already in there. And then you can either cancel or execute fill request, which will go ahead and request the specific number of beans and throw them in here. So there's your 12 corpus. So we've got the automated Essentia refill system up and running in the single player world for you guys to mess around with. I'm just going to go ahead and real quick uh, make sure that uh, this program runs on startup. 
So that anytime you reboot the computer or if the server goes down and comes back up or something along those lines, uh, it'll go ahead and start running. So I think then that we're ready to go with this whole build. And what's cool is I can pretty much hide everything. Uh, we just got a lot of uh, stuff here, but I can pretty much hide everything that we want to behind the walls here. So that actually looks pretty darn good. The one other thing we need to do then is get down our um, Mr. Friend the Golem. So let me break this thing. We're going to stick the alchemical furnace here. The other thing that I didn't automate yet um, is elementum. I mean, we have a ton of it over there. I can just automate getting it into here with something across the line there. Uh, and then I think we're pretty much good to go. So let's drop this guy down right there. Now what's cool is the way I've set this up is he should be able to reach two blocks tall right so he can hit all these guys as they are now if he needs to get to this blocks above here he just climbs up this and then he can run across the top of the jars so for example uh we've got some water up there so i think that's aqua right no it's uh let's see which which one's that water aspect yeah, it is aqua. Oh, you know why? Because it's totally empty. That's right. Remember, aspects that are totally empty won't show just yet until we get an update to the pack. So let's say Iter, for example. That's way up there. So we can come over here and find Iter. By the way, the color code, in case you guys didn't see the series in the past where I had this set up, um, anything with a very low number of aspects is red. Anything with like a medium amount of aspects is yellow. And anything with a lot of aspects is green. So pretty much green means it's almost full. Red means it's almost empty. And yellow is right in the middle. So if we want to take Iter here and you can see currently Iter contains 27. I'm just going to refill that jar completely. So 37 it's what's needed to get me up to the uh, 64. Once I hit execute fill request we can see that we've got a bunch of Iter mana beans in here. Now all I need to do is get my bell and let's see where are you currently allocated to? Oh yeah all kinds of stuff. So if we shift and hold Hold shift and hit F. It completely erases all the golems programming. So then I can just say, you guy, you fill up all these guys. Cool. And then he should manage to make his way up to the Iter jar. Cool. Well, he kind of made it up there. He fell off right at the end. Let's see what he does. He was doing so much better in my single player world. Oh, come on, buddy. Don't mess up on me now. You were working so well when I tested this. Try again. If this is really a problem, I'll figure something out. Why? 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 You were working so well before, I swear. All right. Uh, let's see. What I could try real quick, just to see if this helps. It, you know, may or may not. We'll see. Why do you like spin around in a circle there and act like a derp? You were doing so well before, I swear. All right, pathfinding, I love you and everything you represent. Uh, let's see, what would be a good way to get this thing to behave? It might be because he's trying to step on top of these little blocks here and getting confused. I wonder if I put like a cover there or something. Do I have any covers in my system back at my base? Just so I can test this out, I'm going to request a stack of them. I mean, I know these golems and microblocks, they're not really friends, but what would happen? Is he behaving a little better with that? He was for a second, and then he's like, oh right, I don't like microblocks, because they're hard to path over. But I mean, he's doing better. Let's put covers on top of all these jars and just see how well he does. I mean, if he's a little derpy with his bouncing, that's okay by me. Where do you think you're going? You're not going to get up there that way. You have to go up there. See, this is why I hate dealing with entities sometimes. Their pathfinding is not always the brightest. All right, let me poke around a little bit. I'll see what I can figure out a good solution to this problem. All right, guys, this looks like it might be a solution. So while you still can't see those things there, that's not a problem because I'm just going to replace the stone there with clear glass. If I have enough, yeah, I have enough. There we go. And then we'll just take this guy, we'll make him a wand of equal trade. 
I'll put some clear glass down in one of these places. And then we will do that. See? Ta-da! That doesn't look too bad, right? So, well, now we can see both in the jars here, but also over there. So, for example, I think that's Limus. If we were to say, hey, go fill up Limus with, make sure you can hit the thing from where you're standing, plus 10 should be good. Execute fill request. What he should do is start filling up Limus. And you'll see him run over, and because he can access blocks above and below him, I think. Yeah, see? So, that looks pretty good, right? Yeah, and no more derpy pathfinding. Hooray! I'm telling you guys, that worked in single player, by the way. It totally did. There we go. Cool. Alright, not bad. And then, for example, if I wanted to do Terra, that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Let's get some Terra there. And you know what? I'm just going to refill the entire jar. It's a lot of Essentia, but that's fine. Look at that. Nice. So we have now created an automated Essentia refill system. If we wanted to, we could write a little bit of code that would just keep all these jars full all the time. There's also a little bit of other tweaking I could do. I wouldn't mind being able to keep track of when the jar is finished filling because right now if I requested more mana beans, it would be a little bit of a problem. So we'd want to kind of make sure that this thing's empty before we requested more. Um, so there's a couple things we could do with that. We could either keep checking the jars until they have the amount that we expect but that usually could cause a problem if maybe we didn't really have enough mana beans to do what we wanted to do. So there's a couple things we could do to tweak this system, but overall, it's pretty much 100% automated. So now we don't have to worry about getting aspects for our infusion. Nice. So we should be able to infuse to our heart's content and have a good time while doing it. And not have to worry about, you know, which items we put in to get the right aspects and yada, yada, yada. Now it's just like, hey, I want to infuse something? Not a problem. So uh, this is pretty cool. I'm really excited that we got this up and running because it's kind of been on my to-do list for a while. Um, and because we were able to do it with logistics pipes, we were able to do it a lot more efficiently than the way we did it on the Forgecraft server. So overall, I think that's a win. So I'm um, just tidying up this room, making it look nice. And overall, I think we're in good shape. What do you guys think? Look at that. Terra's almost totally full. Is it done? Yeah. Nice. So now anytime we want to infuse, not a problem. All right, guys, let me tidy up my inventory. I think this pretty much wraps up this um, build here. Um, I can even close off this wall because I don't need access to the computer anymore. If I wanted to put a cover on this guy or a facade, maybe I should just to make everything nice and super well hidden. Do I have any stone facades? I have stone brick facades. Eh, I guess that's better than nothing, right? Request one. Ta-da! Look at that. Everything's hidden behind the walls. All you see is a nice bright monitor and all the Essentia jars. That is cool, huh? I like it. All right, guys, I'm going to play around with the system, make sure everything's working correctly, and then I'll be back in a few minutes. How about 10 more jellum, please? Nice. All right, guys. So one of the first things I want to work with is something that's going to be pretty useful to me, and that would be the wand focus of dislocation. This is a pretty nifty gadget. It allows you to basically pick up any block and store it inside the wand and move it to a new location. This includes blocks like mob spawners um, and other things like chests and furnaces. Pretty much almost anything can be picked up. Uh, so what I would like to get is 20 alienus and 20 procantio. Let's see how we are with it. So this is a good demonstration of how this will work for us. So I want to make sure I have 20 alienus, execute fill request, and that will make sure to do what we want to do. It'll get the alienus over there. It'll quickly burn up. And once we know that this thing's empty, we can go ahead and uh, get ourselves, what was it, 20 Percantio? Yes. So we can run over here and say Percantio, how are we for that? Ah, yeah, we've only got 9, so let's get like 20 of that as well, just so we can keep a decent amount afterwards. We'll also need a couple other things, like, let's see, not this one. 10 Tenebrae, 25 Vacuous. You're empty again, so Tenebre. Yeah, we'll definitely need at least 10 of that. Let's get 15, just in case, because you never know. Um, and uh, then we wanted Vacuous, right? And that we needed a decent amount of 25. So let's open that guy up. We'll say 30, just to be safe. I'm not 100% sure what'll happen with the logistics pipe, if it'll back out. Oh, I did Ven Venenum. 
Oops, misclicked. Uh, vacuous. That's what we want. So I guess. Oh, darn it. I was really just wanting to test what would happen if I overfilled this thing, and as expected, it misbehaved a little bit. Let's get this guy put back in there. Vacuous. So I should really add some kind of system to the code to wait until the, the thing's empty. I should really be checking this is empty, not so much that it's reached the jar, because that guy may take a while to get up there. So we'll kind of see. And then the final piece of this puzzle is vidium. That's an unknown aspect for me, actually. I've never actually scanned anything with taint on it. All right, cool. So while this guy's finishing moving his stuff around, let's see, he's still got a lot of actual uh, work to do here. So I'll wait for him to finish and be right back. All right, he finished working. Uh, one more other thing you're going to need to do is hit the refresh button, and that'll make sure that everything's up to date. Uh, so now that we've got that going, let's hit the button and see what happens. Hopefully, I've done everything I'm supposed to. So this is, I think, actually a little bit of a dangerous thing to be doing. Dislocation, it's got a very high chance of problems. So, up oh, there we go. Example, problems. <laughs> oh boy, there goes the diamond. Trying to keep this area as clean as possible while dealing with issues. Still filling. Alright, so far so good. Start getting those items in. Just kind of trying to keep an eye on all the items to make sure that they make their way into the, where they're supposed to be. Let's get that zombie head placed back where it belongs. The more imbalanced this thing is, the better. All right, one focus dislocation, perhaps. Hooray! Nice. See how awesome that is? So it's a lot easier to kind of deal with this whole thing. This guy is cool, by the way. I really like this wand. What you can do is, like, say, for example, I've got this awesome chest right here. If I wanted to move it... Oh, boy. What did I move? Oh, I grabbed one of the... Uh... <laughs> All right, cool. That's not what I wanted to grab. There we go. Let's do this. Let's see. I think I need to... There we go. Cool. Currently dislocating extra contents. Look at that. And it puts it back down. Nice, right? So it's a really nifty wand. Uh, obviously useful. It does require a lot of um, charge. You can see I just moved three things and it was 20 um, ordo and 20... Uh, it's a lot, basically, uh, per detail. So make sure to keep a good handy refill thing ready to go. I should probably get a few more of these uh, nifty little aura nodes here, but we'll see. For now, I think we've got some good progress made today. We have a ton of really cool stuff. By the way, you need to refresh this uh, once you've used it to make sure that your numbers are accurate. So manual refresh button there. I might write into the code like every so often hit the refresh, maybe like every 10 minutes or something or every five minutes even, just to make sure that that screen is up to date and has what we wanted in there. All right, guys, we'll be back in a moment. All right, and with that, I think, unfortunately, we've hit a good wrapping up point for the episode. So uh, we've obviously got a nice farm going on here with a ton of carrots and potatoes coming out, a little butterfly hanging around out here, a sheep that decided he's allowed outside the pen for no reason. I don't know exactly why that is. Can I dislocate sheep? I don't think I can. No, unfortunately, I can't dislocate entities. That's unfortunate. It looks like we lost a pig, too, which is just a nuisance. Um, oh, well. We'll figure out how these guys managed to escape. I still haven't figured out exactly what's causing them to escape. It worked with vanilla fences. It worked with what we've got set up now. I don't know what the deal is. But long story short, I think we have a ton of carrots. Yeah, we're up to 50. Nice. And potatoes? Oh, we have a lot of potatoes. All right. Yeah, I don't think we need potatoes anymore. Um, that's a crazy amount of potatoes. Are these, like, all potatoes? I thought I... Oh, that's right. There's, like, a little bug sometimes with this planter, or did I not do this? I think sometimes when you log out, it doesn't always behave itself. Sometimes it kind of derps up a little bit. So, eh, 
We'll see what happens. We'll let this thing grow and uh, get more carrots, hopefully. I was going to say, I had a pretty balanced farm there. I don't know how we could have had so many more potatoes than carrots. All right, downstairs, how's everything going in my dark room? Everything's running all right? Looks to be. Oh, yeah, there's an enderman showing up, being sneaky. I want to check my mob essence, too, because I kind of burned a lot of it getting those mana beans. Oh, yeah, we've got a decent amount filled back up. So, for now, this is Direwolf20 signing off. What I would like to do is probably next episode, I might want to start a little bit on Witchery. I think it's a good time to get started with that. Um, Witchery is a really cool mod. It has a bunch of different cool abilities and effects. Uh, a lot of those effects are PvP-based, or at least for use against other players. But don't worry, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in the single-player world, too and I'd like to check out some of that cool stuff and maybe even automating some of it. We'll have to see. For now, this is Diable 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And as always, take it easy.